Hello friends, this video on structure of Adams Power 34 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 33. Let's study the filling of orbitals. The filling of orbital depends on the first principle that is called a bow principle. We'll discuss this. It also depends on Pauli's exclusion principle and Hohn's rule of maximum multiplicity. Also, it depends on relative energies of orbitals. So, let's discuss the above principle first. This principle states that in the ground state of atom, the orbitals are filled in order of their increasing energies. Please note, they are filled in order of their increasing energies. If you see, the order if you have for any multi-electron atom, this is the order I told you, order will depend on n plus l rule. For this n is 1, l is 0, so this is 1, n plus l. For this n is 1, l is 0, n plus l is 2. For this n is 2, l is 1, this is 3. Here n is 3, l is 0 because s, 3. But if you compare these two, the lower value of n is taken first. So this is how we have ordered, arranged the orbitals in the increasing order. We have done in the past slide also, we have ordered this in the increasing order and the at the electrons are filled first in 1s if this is filled completely then in 2s then in 2p then in 3p 3p like that so a good way to understand this is you can write in this fashion 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p 3d 4s 4p 4d like that and then you start like this in this fashion you get 2s then you get 2p 3s then you get 3p4s like this. So I'll just show you. It's a good way to learn actually. 2s, 2p. For 3, you get 3s, 3p, 3d. For 4, you get 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f like that. For 5, you get 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f like that. Right? For 6, also you get 6s, 6p, 6d, 6f. But nothing more than f is required, so the max I am putting is like that, uh, f only. So you start with 1s, right, you get this 1s, and then you, you get this 2s, then you go like this, you get 2p and 3s, then you get 3p, 4s, right, again you go back without touching, again you touch and come, 3d, 4p, 5s, again you go back without touching, and you come back with touching this this is how the order is and that's the exactly the same uh, figure which is here so this is a easy way to understand but the logic here is the lower energy this is lower energy this is higher energy higher energy orbitals so the lower energy orbitals get filled first then higher then higher and it goes on this is the first principle which says that the lower energy orbitals get filled first and then the higher energy. Next is the Pauli's exclusion principle. So we have told the lower energy get filled first, but how many electrons can there be in one orbital? That was something not defined. So this guy Pauli, uh, this principle Pauli's exclusion principle says that no two electron in an atom can have same set of four quantum numbers. This is the Pauli's exclusion principle. That means for a given L, M, N and N, P, sorry, M, P, sorry, N, L, M, N, P, this four quantum numbers we have, right? Principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, uh, this is orientation quantum number and this is uh, my spin quantum number. So, for all, with all four of these quantum numbers, I can uniquely identify an electron. That means one electron, no two electrons can have same all the four values, right? And that clearly means that since this can have only two volumes plus two plus one by two and minus one by two. That means in one orbital there are two electrons and that we have discussed earlier also. Right? So this guy says that no two electrons in an atom can have four set of quantum numbers. We have four set of quantum numbers we have discussed. So if we have all the values of n, l, m, n, m, uh, n, l, m and m, p, we can tell which electron we are talking about. Right? And it also states that only two electrons exist in the same orbitals. 
and these electrons must have opposite spin as i told this can uh, the the magnetic uh, the spin qu uh, quantum number has only two values uh, this is a clockwise and anti clockwise so it says that in the orbital you can have only two electrons and they should have opposite spin right so this means that two electrons can have same value of three quantum numbers this three this n l m n l but they should have opposite spin i think we have discussed this earlier also and the maximum number of electrons in a shell is 2n square for a given n for example 1s i tell so for 1 i have 2n square 2s 2p will have 2 into 2 square 3s 3p and 3d the maximum value in this shell we shall have all these 3s 3p 3d will have 3 into 3 square electrons then we got something called Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. So till now we have told that, for example, three p, three p orbital uh, will be filled after three s, let's suppose, right? But the question is, in three p, three p shell also, in three p subshells actually, three in three p subshells, they are three orbitals 3px 3py 3pz and all have equal energy correct because i'm saying 3p is not the orbital actually 3p is the subshell so in 3 3p subshells we have three orbitals 3px 3py 3pz and all these three p have equal energy energy is equal in all these three orbitals so which one will be filled first we don't know right so to avoid this confusion Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity come to save us it this deals only with uh, uh, in a sharp cells if you have orbitals and they have same energy and they are called uh, degenerate orbitals it deals with filling of electrons in those orbitals it says that pairing of electrons in orbitals belonging to same sharp cells p d or f does not take place until each orbital belonging to that sub cell has got one electron for example in this case if you see there are three uh, p three px three p by three pz. That means we have uh, this is let's suppose px, right? So we have uh, or else like this. I'll put one box for px, one for py, one for pz. So it says that first one each will come in all these orbitals. Once it is filled, once it is half filled, then only the second electrons will. Hope you understand. See, for example, I'll tell you, I have, this is my 3p shell. So this is my 3px, this is 3py and 3pz. One first electron comes, it will come here in this cell. The second electron comes, it should come in the same, this px orbital or py orbital. We don't know. Then this guy comes, Hohn's rule of maximum multiplicity. It says that this new electron will come in py not in px why because it says that it says that if you see that pairing of electrons does not take place until the each orbitals in that subshell has got one electron the pairing won't start until each of this orbitals px py pz has got one electron so the next electron comes will it go to px py or pz it should go to pz why because the pairing will not start until everything each of the orbitals has got one electron now the second electron, the fourth electron now will come to this place, then to this place and then to this place. So this rule was given by, right? So it, it says that since there are three P's, five D's and seven F orbitals, therefore pairing of the electron in these orbitals will start with the entry of, since there are three P's, so till third P there is no pairing, from the fourth the pairing will start in P. For D if you see, to talk about D, so if you talk about D, for example, I'm talking about D sharp cells. So D will have five, one, two, three, four, five, right? So we have five uh, orbitals for D, uh, D X Y, D Y Z, D X Y minus Y square like that. So the first guy, second guy, third electron, fourth electron, fifth electron will be filled like this without pairing. Only the sixth electron will be paired. So if you say the pairing starts from sixth electron. And similarly for um, f orbitals, if you see for f, we have 
for f sub shells actually 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah for f sub cell we have seven orbitals right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 orbitals so the first electron will come like this second will be the second orbital third will be third orbital fourth fifth sixth seventh only from the eighth electron the pairing will start for f orbit hope you understand what this guy is trying to say is guy is trying to say that in a sub shell if you have more orbitals for example for p we have three orbitals the pairing will start only from the fourth first second third will be uh, without pairing only from the fourth the pairing will start in case of p orbitals uh, p sub cells there are five orbitals so the pairing will start only from the sixth electron till fifth electron each of this electron will be a different orbital and will be alone only for the sixth electron it comes the pairing starts it is as good as uh, in the bus if you see right they are let's suppose one two three four five empty sets and if passengers come they generally want to uh, even, if, even if there is a double set in the bus right uh, you, have, you must have seen in the bus there are double seats double seats right like that uh, so one two three four five like, like this so if a passenger comes he'll sit here the second guy comes if they don't know each other so instead of sitting here he'll prefer sitting here because this guy is an empty seat again one more new guy comes he will prefer sitting here instead of sitting beside these two guys because he'll get more more space again a new guy comes he'll try to sit in the uh, new space but then if all these seats are filled only i mean all these uh, double seats are filled with one electron one one person the next guy comes, he don't have any other choice than to share the seat. Nobody likes to share the seat. Similarly, the electrons don't want to share the orbitals. They want to be alone, right, if, if given the choice. So that's why they want to be alone in this orbitals. Only if there is no other option, they want to pair. And, and it has been observed that half-filled and fully-filled orbitals acquire extra stability due to symmetry. Please note. Because of the symmetry, half filled and full filled have extra stability. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.